hello everyone. My name is Bart and I am a well-known butterfly slash moth breeder slash youtuber slash entomologist on the internet and on my channel you can see a great variety of butterfly and moth species. In fact I think today my channel has videos of about 300 to 400 different species of butterflies and moths. And today I'm going to answer one of the most commonly asked questions that I get. And that is, <clears throat> Dear Bart, what is the rarest species of butterfly or moth that you ever had? Intriguing question, so I'm going to answer it to you right now. You listen. So here is the answer for that question. I don't give a shit. And neither should you. You see, it is somewhat of an ignorant question. Let me explain to you why this is. You see, this question can only be answered if we look at the various reasons that insects are rare. And these reasons are very diverse. Actually, rare insects don't exist. It is a very human concept to say that something is rare. Now, that may sound a little bit strange, but it needs some clarification right here. First reason why some insects are very rare is because they are rarely collected by humans. That can be for various reasons. Most commonly because they live in very remote areas where almost nobody comes to collect insects, right? Or take one of the rarest silk moths in the world. It is called the Archema Basanti. Let me show you a picture of it. Oh, that's an excellent and beautiful moth, right? And let me tell you how rare this insect is. Um, only about 12 of these moths have ever been found. 12 specimens. And I believe 10 of them are male and only two of them were female. So that means there's less than three females of this insect have ever been seen and less than 12 individuals in total. Is this special? No, it's not special at all. This is very common. There's thousands of insect species in this world of which only one or two specimens have ever been collected. So it's not at all exceptional or unique. That sounds a little bit strange. But the thing is that, take this moth for example that I'm talking about, is Archema Besanti, right? It lives north of the Kilimanjaro in Kenya. And this area is very dangerous to go to. It is a no man's land where you can risk your life just by simply going there you risk getting killed and robbed or worse. So really because of the terrorism and crime and lack of well basically safety no sane entomologist is willing to go there not even the most dedicated ones. And Because of this very few of these insects have ever been collected. Second of all we probably don't know where it lives. You see, the fact that you find a moth in one location doesn't mean that it really lives there. Now that sounds a little bit strange because you're saying, Bart, I found this insect right here. How can you say that it doesn't live here? Okay, well, let me explain. Insect populations are usually scattered over a big area, right? See it as like a territory or a habitat or a native range. And within this range, the species is not going to have the same abundance everywhere, right? Within this area where the species lives, there are small hotspots where many of them are. And outside at the periphery, they can be more scarce. And it could be that the location where these moths have been collected 
they are actually not that common. This can be seen even if we look at the most common species. For example, take um, let's think of a very common insect from the uh, from the United States. Uh, let me think of all the silk moths. Well, let me take the uh, robin moth for example. Hyalophora cacropia. This is a very common silk moth in some parts of North America. But when you go to the periphery of the range, basically from the transition where there is a big population and you go more north, more north, more north from Canada into Alaska where it's getting colder and colder and suddenly you will get at a point where it's too cold for the moths to survive, where you will find no moths. And when you go south then you will find populations but between these areas there's a small like a no man's land where the moths become increasingly rare until they meet the point where basically no individuals live. And if you happen to collect moths in this region, then you may be under the impression that they are quite rare, while in reality it's a very common insect. So in this case, the concept of rarity is not at all a natural phenomenon. It means that the moths either live in a place where nobody wants to go because it's too dangerous or maybe out of reach or uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe it's at the periphery of their range. Maybe we don't know a lot about the insect and that means we don't know where it lives. If you're collecting in the wrong place, a common insect may actually be very rare, okay? If even if you take the most common insects in the whole world, there's probably still a few places where even those are rare because the area is a little bit out of their comfort zone, for example. You know, it could be anything. So in this case, the rarity of a species does not reflect how many there are in the wild. Ooh, I have a bad hair day. Bah! Anyway, wow, I shouldn't have filmed that. <laughs> anyway, this is one of the reasons why an insect can be rare, right? So. You and me understand each other a little bit better now. Second of all, you must understand that uh, when it comes to insect population ecology, yes, that's a whole big phrase with big boy words, insect population ecology, in order to maintain a um, functioning breeding population, insects need hundreds to thousands of individuals to be able to maintain genetic diversity and to compensate for their huge mortality rates. When I say a very rare rhino, a very rare tiger, a rare Sumatran rhino, I don't know, in some cases there's like 10 individuals left of these rare animals. With insects this is really not possible because to maintain a healthy breeding population there's usually still hundreds to thousands individuals. So even when it comes to the most rare insects in the world, there's probably still localities where the populations are, where there are hundreds to thousands of individuals. Take Papilio hospiton, for example. It's only found in Corsica, I believe. And another island, I don't know, was it Sardinia? I think it was Sardinia. And this, this is one of the rarest butterflies in Europe, right? because it's restricted to a very small island. But they did a count there and they counted over 10,000 butterflies. So is that really that rare? Well, outside of that island, I can guarantee you, the butterfly is very in demand. Collectors want to have it. But if you go to the right place in Corsica, it's probably the most common insect you can find there. Huh? So this is just one of the ways in which Scarcity and rarity are basically just very subjective and made up terms. It, do, it doesn't work the same way as with, as with mammals, because the biology of insects is very different from other animals. When I say that something is rare, it really means it is hard to get for humans. Maybe because it's in a country where it's illegal to collect insects. For example, generally, Insects from countries like uh, Myanmar or Bhutan are very rare because it's taboo to kill and collect insects there, it's not legal. So any insect from there is going to be rare because nobody is allowed to catch them. That's right, it doesn't say anything about them in the wild. So, um, 
So it could be because we don't know anything about them, because they're hard to catch in a remote location, or, um, well, basically hard to get for human artificial scarcity. So it gets really, really, really confusing. And let me tell you, there are numerous insects of which only one or two individuals were ever collected, ever. Uh, this especially happens in Papua, for example, Papua New Guinea or the um, Indonesian part of Papua or just the whole island of Papua. Uh, there are so many insects there, so many unique endemic species that can be found nowhere else in the world. And sometimes an entomologist will do uh, a trip there, like an excursion, and he will catch a butterfly and it's a new species. Wow. Okay, so he slaps a name on it. And guess what? Nobody ever rediscovers this insect because it's very hard to find in the jungle. Uh, maybe the place where it flies is inaccessible now or too dangerous or politics have changed. Or maybe the place was deforested and we don't know if it lived in another place. Maybe it's extinct. It's like insects go extinct all the time and we don't even notice it. So just, that's just another way that insects can be rare. So when you ask me Bart what is the rarest insect on your channel? It's not really a question I can answer. Well, let me tell you, one of the rarest moths on my channel that I bred was the uh, European owl moth. Let me show you some footage of them. Now, these small grey moths don't look impressive, but they are really impressive. Uh, they are only found in one volcano in Europe, in the country of Italy, and around the slopes and the base of the Monte Vulture. And here the insects uh, basically live in ash and ligustrum forest. Uh, it's a very primitive moth species, a relic, a relic species that has stayed there since the uh, ice ages. So basically, while well, since the ice age, the whole climate of Europe has changed and became warmer. Uh, this, this moth has found refuge from that time in one tiny spot in Italy where the climate never changed since the ice age. Since the... The area around the volcano, the slopes, are very stable. It's a unique condition. So, uh, and this, this moth only lives in like an area of 50 square kilometers. It's incredibly small. If someone would have to deforest this place and destroy the habitat, the species would be poof, extinct. So in artificial terms, that is probably the rarest insect on my channel. But still, it makes no sense to, to go on and on about this and about this is a rarity. Because first of all, locally this insect at the right time at the right place, it may be common, okay? It is common outside of its habitat, but inside its habitat it is not rare. And outside of it, it is rare. So think about that for a second. Second of all, it may just be hard to find for humans. Maybe it's camouflaged. Some of the rarest insects live in the treetops in the tropics, for example. Uh, the treetops there are like 20 meters high or more. Good luck finding a specimen there. Also notice how rare females of moths are compared to the males. That's because females are not attracted to light and entomologists usually collect moths with light. And but if you breed these moths in captivity, it becomes clear that the male to female ratio is about 50-50. 50% males, 50% females. But in the wild, it's like 90% male, 10% female. But this is artificial. That's because females are harder to find than males. They are not actually more rare. They are artificially more rare because they are harder to obtain for humans. But in the wild, there's just as many females as there are males. So this is a piece of evidence of how what we think is rare is really not rare. And at least it doesn't work the same way as you expect it to be. <clears throat> Second of all, uh, I'm a little bit of opposed to drooling, drooling about, uh, about rare species and bragging about them. Um, you know what I really like about breeding butterflies and moths? It's the community. I made so many friends, I met so many good people, I love it. People are really kind to me and uh, that's why I love doing this YouTube stuff. You know, it's a great community. 
So, um, but I've also been in the in the spider hobby, in the mantis hobby, and those communities are not so nice because there's a lot of people with ego, uh, or the snake community. Are you a snake breeder? Have you ever seen those guys on the internet like, oh, I have the rarest snake ever, eh? No, I'm the only guy that ever bred this. And um, sure, those people also exist in the butterfly and moth world. For some reason, they are a little bit more rare. They tend to be collectors, not breeders. But still, they exist. And I think it is a little bit foolish and deluded, okay? Because this is, in my opinion, a hobby that you should be doing because you are interested in nature and you want to study it. And it is very foolish to focus yourself on the rarest part of nature. Because anyone that is educated in biology will agree that rare doesn't mean shit. It doesn't mean shit. So, um, and people who concentrate on, oh, I want to breed the rarest moths, I want to study the rare, I want to collect the rarest butterfly. Their passion is really coming from a wrong place in their heart, in my opinion. Now, as for me, you will see on my channel that I have videos of both the most common and both the rarest animals. And that's because there's no difference to me between those, you know. I mean, think about it logically. In fact, common species are more important than rare species. Because if a species is more abundant, Right, take for example um, a very common butterfly, Pyrus brassica, okay, cabbage white. You can find him everywhere in Europe. You can probably collect like a hundred in a good day. Uh, if that species went extinct, it would make a huge impact because they are so common everywhere. There's so, so many thousands of animals that, that feed on them, uh, that use them as prey, they have a huge impact on the environment. But if like a very rare butterfly would go extinct, let's say, uh, well, let's say just like that Papilio Hospital from Corsica I mentioned before, right? And nobody would care, right? I mean, it would it would be sad if it went extinct. It's sad, but uh, it would make a less less of an impact than if like a common species like Pyrus brassica went extinct. So for that reason alone, if you are educated in biology then it should become very clear to you that um, rare doesn't really mean anything. A rare species is not more important than a common species. A rare species isn't more interesting than a common species. Uh, in fact, rare doesn't mean anything at all except to collectors maybe who are in it for the, for the money. But uh, that's just, I wanted just to, wanted to get it off my chest, you know. But uh, the thing that I really just wanted to get across is that uh, I am doing this because I, f I find insects and life and butterflies and moths very interesting. I want to study them and I'm doing this purely for knowledge and not for bragging rights, okay? I'm, I'm not doing this so I can brag on the internet, oh, oh guys, I, I bred the rarest silk moths on the planet. That's, that's so silly, that's so silly, and I cringe when I see people do this because, you know, if I wanted to brag, I would get an expensive car, like a Ferrari or something, I would become a banker or a doctor or a scientist or a ma um, mathematician, it doesn't really matter what you're good at. <laughs> Breeding insects is not something to brag about, dude. Let's be honest. Are you the biggest insect breeder in the world? Have you bred the rarest species in the world? Nobody cares. That's such a weird thing to brag about. But sadly it still happens. Uh, but these people make one logical mistake, okay? The average person on the street, okay? Is not going to give a shit about you breeding a rare insect. You know the people who do give a shit? That's the people who find insects interesting. They give a shit. So the only people who will be impressed by what you do with insects are people who already care about insects. And the people who are already care about insects are the ones who find them interesting and who are in it for the knowledge. And they will very easily spot a person whose motivations are something else, who are not, who isn't more in it for his ego than for the knowledge. So, 
I think it's a I think it's so misguided to to focus on rare species all the time. You know, I don't focus on rare or common. Okay, I just want to I just want to study all of them. I want to study the biggest ones, the smallest ones, the the brown ones, the colorful ones, and yes, the rare ones, and also the common ones. It's really about the big picture. It's about studying and appreciating life. And you don't celebrate life by only celebrating the rarities. Because when you do that, you're just focusing on yourself. And that's the thing, you know. Last but least, I also want to say, abundance is also a thing. A lot of, wow, well, I have a bad hair day. A lot of insects have populations where there's like many insects in one small area and you will see thousands of them in the same place. And there's also insects where you have only a few a few individuals per a few miles. One such example is the um, Papilio alexanor from Europe. It's considered a rarity because you don't see them that often. And when you do it's usually one or two. But you, you never see 100 because it turns out these guys are really good at flying around and dispersing, so uh, I really don't know a lot about their biology, but it, I, this effect, I know for a fact these guys have like a very thinly spread out population, which give an impression of them being rare, although it's still a very widespread species in Europe. So at the end of the day, it's really not that rare. It just seems that it's rare for us to humans. And that's it, really. That's my round. So... Uh, it's a two-part rant. Point A that I'm trying to make is rarity doesn't exist in nature. Rarity means nothing to a biologist. It only means something to, to collectors or stupid people. And the second thing I want to say is, well, I'm not doing this for attention or to brag about rare species and neither should you because that's a misguided motivation for doing this. Thank you for watching, hope to see you next time. Oh, and uh, before I go, I think this uh, emphasis on rarity is not only being instigated by collectors, by the way, I have nothing against collectors, okay? Collecting is a good hobby, but uh, I don't like the people who do it just because they are after the rarest things. But I appreciate the people that do it out of a genuine interest in nature and the environment. If you want to learn about butterflies, if you want to collect them, then by all means, you should basically collect, well, all of them and not focus yourself on something that's rare. Because that's, that's, I mean, if you want to say, I, I focus on silk moths, I focus on swallowtail butterflies, that's a good distinction. And maybe they happen to be rare, that's okay. But if you say, I only collect rare butterflies, that's a strange collection because it, it's not really, it doesn't encompass any specific group. It's not a study group. It's, it's it will just be a collection of random things that that impress humans the most. It's not really a scientific collection at all. Uh, but what I wanted to say is that biologists, of course, and ecologists also have the tendency sometimes to study rare species, but that's not not because they care about them being rare so much. But it just Logically, think about it logically, species that are rare, of course, less is going to be known about them because they are harder to study. And generally, it's the truth that when an animal is very rare or hard to find in the wild, then it means we know relatively little about them. And that's why some biologists will make an effort to research rare, some rare species, but that's not because they actually care about them being rare. Just because rarity correlates with a lack of knowledge because it's, so it just so happens some rare species are actually well studied but most of them are not just because they are rare and thus hard to study so and that cultivates that image I guess so uh, it's something that we need to remove from the hobby now I also want to say that uh, I might sound like a hypocrite because I'm saying I'm not doing this for attention I'm not doing this for ego, for social credit, for points Yet on the other side, I'm also being a YouTuber, I'm here, I'm here getting likes, I'm here getting views, I'm here promoting myself. Uh, but I just really just want to clarify that I'm not running this channel because I want to be famous. 
I really don't give a shit. Uh, let me tell you, I'm I'm not that much of an interesting person at all. Uh, in fact, I'm very uneducated. I still don't have my degree. I'm a very late student. I'm a shitty biologist. I'm just a hobbyist that likes to play with moths. And that's not something really worthy of praise. It's not something you should put an ego in. It's something I just want to use. You know, I want to I want to get the attention from the internet and redirect it to the things I care about, okay? I would be a liar if I said I don't enjoy the attention. Of course, it's great. I made a lot of friends. YouTube changed my life. It changed my social life. Basically, and it's and, and my channel is growing so much. I think next year maybe I have 10,000 subscribers or more. And I enjoy the social aspect of it very much. It's great. But it's not my prime motivation. I've been making videos now for like seven years and I didn't get any attention for about the first four years of me uploading. But I kept going. Why? Just because I like talking about this. I'm passionate about it. And the likes for me are a means to an end. I'm, I'm harvesting the likes and I'm bringing them to nature, to moths. I want to I wanna show them to people. I want to get people to care about these things, you know. I don't only want them to see my face or say, Oh my God, this Bart Coppins is the best insect breeder in the world. Oh my God. That's not something to brag about. Being a hobbyist that breeds insects is nothing to brag about, okay? If you want bragging rights, go to school, get a biology degree, become an entomologist, and probably even the, the, the least experienced entomologist in the world is still better than the best insect breeder in the world. There I said it. Breeding insects really doesn't mean shit. In fact, breeding insects doesn't even mean that you know a lot about them. I mean, it can be correlated, but it isn't always the truth. So, that's just to debunk. That I know some people are, would, go, would say, Bart, you're a hypocrite because you're saying you're not doing this to brag about being the best breeder or bragging about caring about the rare species. But uh, no, no, it's really just a general interest in life and my desire to bring these things under your attention. So um, that's it really. No such thing as a rare insect. Very, very subjective, very subjective thing. So, oh, by the way, here's just another fun fact about rarity. Did you know that diamond is one of the mo most common gemstones in the whole world? Yet still the most expensive because they are kept artificially rare and because the demand for them is higher. Diamond is extremely common. So, just another way to see how we warp the natural world according to our desires. But this time I'm really going to go. Because it's bedtime for me. Goodbye.